வணக்கம் when there is a problem on the hand we always go to the doctor he advises he treats the condition and he cures most of the problems but it is important to know what is the cause for the problem and why the problem has occurred in this series we will talk about the common problems that occur in the hand whether it is due to injury or whether it is due to any swellings in the hand or whether it is due to any pain in the hand before we proceed further i would like to give you a word of caution i have made these descriptive videos of problems in the hand only to be able to understand the problems better so that you can cooperate with your treating surgeon in a more understanding way the treatment of the conditions discussed should only be done by the certified medical practitioners today in this series we are going to talk about brachial plexus injury this is a condition where all the nerves of the upper limb are not acting so the hand doesn't move there is no sensation on the hand this can occur in many conditions and we shall see what those conditions are how it is treated and how the results will be and when we can expect the results if you have any doubts or questions please make your comments in the comments box below what is this brachial plexus and what is the injury that can occur to the brachial plexus now our hands have to do a lot of work and all this work is controlled as we know by the brain but this brain exercises its control only by the way of the nerves so the nerves come down from the brain to the hand now the nerves do not come straight from the brain they come into what is known as the spinal cord which is running inside the spinal column from this spinal cord the nerves come out and they form a plexus now this is something like a web a spider's web where all the nerves are interconnected and then you have got the branches going to the hand the particular parts of the upper limb the nerves have three important functions to do the first is they have to move the parts of the hand for instance the elbow you have to move it like this the fingers you have to move you have to flex you have to extend these are carried out by the effect of the nerves on the muscles that is called the motor function the second is called the sensory function that is it provides sensation these nerves also provide sensation to the parts of the hand for instance when you touch a soft object you will know that you're touching a soft object even if you have your eyes closed because the fingers can feel it these are important functions that is the sensation is an important function provided by the nerves there is yet another important function apart from the motor and the sensory function that is called the autonomic function for instance you we get goose bumps when you are scared or sweating occurs all these are functions that are done to preserve the internal environment the muscles of the hand and the upper limb so these are also important functions of the nerves now all these nerves when they come out from the spinal cord they come out from the neck portion of the spinal cord known as the cervical portion there are four branches coming from the cervical portion that is c5 c6 c7 c8 and one segment coming from the thoracic portion that is called the t1 so c5 to t1 are the segments from where the nerves come and form a plexus they form a web and this is called the brachial plexus this brachial plexus is what controls the entire nerves of the upper limbs you have one on this side and one on the opposite side they are similar they have a similar pattern on both sides when there is when this brachial plexus is affected completely it is called a complete palsy now when this happens all the nerves of the brachial plexus that is all the nerves of the upper limb are affected and they do not function 
So you do not have motor, you do not have sensory and you do not have autonomic function. Like in this young man who has no function in the right upper limb which has been affected by a complete brachial plexus palsy. When it is only partially involved, it is called a partial brachial plexus injury and that also will reflect in some loss of the movements of the upper limb. Like this gentleman who has some movements in the fingers of the left upper limb but there is very little movement in the shoulder and there is almost no movement in the elbow. So when do we get such injuries? There are three types of problems where you have the involvement of the brachial plexus. The first is direct injury. Direct injury can be either a cut over here or it can be a accident. For instance, a motorcycle accident in which the rider is moving so fast and suddenly he breaks or hits against something, he is thrown off the vehicle and he falls on the ground. And because he falls with the force, what happens? The neck is separated like that and the nerves get avulsed or cut at this level. So his hand will not move after that. Portions of the hand or the entire hand will not move after that. This is called traumatic brachial plexus injuries. The second type of involvement of the brachial plexus is called neonatal brachial plexus palsy. When the child is large or when the pelvis of the mother is small, there is a difficulty during delivery and this may cause an injury to the brachial plexus and in this child, upper limb will not work. This is called a neonatal brachial plexus palsy. The third type of affectation of the brachial plexus is when there is a tumour. The tumour may not necessarily be in the nerves. It can also be in the tissues around the brachial plexus. It may press on the brachial plexus or it may involve the brachial plexus in which case the particular nerves that are involved will not function. So these are the three main ways in which this affectation can occur. What are the different types of injuries? Now, when you have electrical wires going along, if we just cut the wires like that, definitely you will not have any function of the uh, electrical uh, appliances that are being motored by these electrical wires. For instance, the AC will not run, the fan will not run, the lights will not work. This is called a cut injury. When it occurs in the nerves of the brachial plexus, this is how it looks and it is called a rupture or a cut injury. Sometimes what happens, the wires are pulled from inside. Supposing you pull out the wires like that, you do not know exactly where the injury is. That is an avulsion injury. As you can see here, the two nerves arising from the spinal cord have been pulled away or avulsed. So the brachial plexus can also be affected in these two ways. It may just be a cut or it can be an avulsion. There is another third type of injury in brachial plexus in which they were pulled but they got back. So they will have a temporary dysfunction. They will not function temporarily but they will gain function afterwards. This is called a traction injury and this will usually recover completely. So when such an injury occurs, the doctor will do a clinical examination. He will examine your muscles to see which of the muscles are acting, which of the muscles are not acting and which parts of the upper limb have got sensation, which parts do not have sensation and he will be able to come to a fair enough diagnosis about which part of the nerves are involved. He may also do some investigations like for instance a scan, a CT scan or an MRI scan and sometimes we may have to inject what is known as a contrast material. A drug is injected inside and then we try to visualize the nerves to look for any evidence of avulsion. Once all these are done, we will be able to make a fair diagnosis and then plan the treatment. If the nerves have just been cut, they can be sutured or if there is a gap in the nerves, we cannot suture them, they will be too tight, you cannot suture them. So then we will have to put a nerve graft because the nerve that from where it is coming in is good and all you have to do is put a graft so that the nerve can continue to grow. If we do a nerve repair today, 
it will not function tomorrow because the nerve has to grow in from this end and reach the place where it has to act. So, it takes time. It will start growing only one month after the repair is done because there will be a scar in that place. And after starting to grow, it will grow at approximately 1 millimeter per day. So, you can imagine the number of months it is going to take to reach till the tips of the fingers to get back sensation. Now, supposing the nerves have not been cut but have been avulsed, I told you they have been pulled from the spinal cord, we will not be able to suture the nerves with the present status of surgical procedures. So, what we will have to do is, we will have to borrow some nerves from the side which are intact and make them do the function of the nerves that are not acting. For instance, we can take the nerves from the chest and extra nerves can be taken and used to function certain important functions of the upper limb that we want to achieve. For instance, flexion of the elbow is an important function. Flexion of the fingers is an important function for minimum function of the upper limb. So, this way it can be done. Is surgery of the nerve the only option? No. Supposing the nerves are not functioning or a surgery has been done but still it has failed. How can it fail? See, when we put in, when we plant about a hundred seeds, it is not always that you get a hundred plants growing. It is not the fault of the person who has planted the seeds. There is some problem with the seed or there is some problem with the soil because we have given the same uh, fertilizers and the same water to all the seeds, yet some seeds grow, some do not. That is how the nerves also grow. They must be totally intact, they must be in a good environment, only then they grow. So, if the nerves that have been operated do not grow, there are other options available. For instance, if the muscle is not working, then what we can do is, we can bring a different muscle from the thighs. It is called the gracilis muscle. This can be brought here along with its blood supply to make it alive and along with its nerve to make it function. This is called a functioning muscle transfer. So, this is a microvascular surgical procedure and this also can get back a basic amount of movements in the upper limb. The importance of physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is very important. First, when the patient presents, a physiotherapist will be able to assess what the problem is. The second importance of the physiotherapist is mobilization. You have to keep the, the joints mobile. Now, you know that the muscles that are acting in the limb are no longer acting in a brachial plexus injury because the nerves have been affected. But the muscles not only need blood to survive, they also need to be electrically charged so that when the nerve grows in, they will be able to function. To keep them electrically charged, the first important way is to keep moving it. That keeps them electrically charged. Here you can see a physiotherapist giving joint mobilization and muscle movements for a patient with a brachial plexus injury. The second way is electrical stimulation. This is also one of the important functions, important roles of the physiotherapist who is able to give electrical stimulation and keep the muscles charged so that they can start functioning after the procedure or the surgical procedure. Here you can see the physiotherapist giving measured amounts of electrical stimulus to keep the muscles active. It is not always a single procedure that is needed. Sometimes we may need multiple procedures in multiple sittings to get back function. If one procedure has been done, we need to wait to see whether that procedure is working. If that procedure is not working, we will get an idea by about 3 to 6 months, after which we can plan the next procedure. The whole aim of any intervention treatment in brachial plexus injury is to get back minimum function. How much can we get? If it is a partial brachial plexus injury, as I told you, some part of the brachial plexus has been involved, we can get back fairly good function. But if the whole brachial plexus has been involved, the amount of function that is going to return 
is going to be less. But what we will aim for is minimum function for the patient to carry out his own daily activities. My first advice is the though the treatment is available for brachial plexus injuries, avoiding these problems is so important. Just avoid driving fast on bikes. Why bikes I am saying is because you get thrown off the bike and the injury that occurs is going to occur when your head is moves away to one side and you get an injury. If such an unfortunate accident occurs, please consult a registered medical practitioner as early as possible. Neurologists and pediatricians can assess the patient also and help in giving good advice to the patient or referring the patient to the correct surgical center if required. The surgical procedures for brachial plexus injuries are usually done by hand surgeons, plastic surgeons or neurosurgeons. The earlier the surgery that is done, the earlier will be the return of function and the better will be the return of function. So what happens if a patient is neglected and goes for treatment after 2 years or 3 years? We can do some treatment for that also, but the results will not be as good as we can expect when done early. We shall be discussing more about other practical problems that occur in the upper limb. But do subscribe to stay connected so that we can discuss more. Thank you and manakkam.